three ways we make ourselves unhappy in marriage. So the first way that we make ourselves unhappy in marriage, we got married for all the wrong reasons. When we get married to have kids, we get married as a way to have our life automatically created for us so we don't have to make any decisions about what we might want or what we want to create in our lives and have to actually do life and take responsibility for it. When we get married for the illusion of love, when we get married for the pursuit of happiness, thinking that marriage will make us happy, or we get married to check it off the list because that's what we think we should do or we're supposed to do. I think the lady is right in certain areas. Obviously, she said we get married for all the wrong reasons. I don't think it is all the wrong reasons. I just think the weighting of things is wrong. So many people choose marriage partners dependent on beauty and charm and how they make them feel because I think many young people grew up with romantic programs. So they think how someone looks and how charming they are and how they smile and what a good time they have is most important. They forget that marriage is actually a practical partnership and how people, how skilled people are in life, first of all starting from what committed Christians they are, because if someone does not love God, they're not going to love you over time. We get married for all the wrong reasons. There's no awareness of what we are doing. There's, there literally is no cognitive understanding of what we are signing up for, what the responsibilities and roles will be. Therefore, we never take on the responsibilities or role. So we become incredibly resentful, either overtly or covertly angry and bitter. We feel trapped. We feel imprisoned by our choice. It's like we wake up one day wondering, how did I get here? How did I get this life? This isn't what I thought it was supposed to be. The romance is gone. And now I'm with this other person and I have no idea what I'm doing and this isn't what I want. The reality sets in and then we're constantly wondering how to get out of it. So interesting photo there, the guy playing the lady who's in the shape of a cello. This obviously leads to players and charmers who know what to say to women to attract them or women who know what to do and say to attract men. But this also happens in the church where people pick wrongly in the church and pick people that are not skilled in practical things of life like they can't even pitch up on time they uh, their word doesn't mean much they don't work hard they're lazy so picking right in the church is also a big problem look at this uh, this video clip of a normal party people go to parties like this and pick or like people because of beauty and charm and this is extremely short-sighted but it probably comes from people not being educated Try to work it in. What's in there, Rose? Here. Club soda. With cranberry. Very still. Hey, you know, this party's looking a little stiff cold. So, what are you saying? I need to amp it up? You could try, but this crowd doesn't dance before midnight. Okay. Rocking a party. Step one. So it's the DJ's job to get the crowd out of their heads and into their bodies. So in order to do that, you need at the very least a caveman sense of rhythm, a cursory knowledge of mathematics, and the broad strokes of ninth grade biology. For example, the bass line controls this region of the body right here. Most important region. There's always going to be resistance. So you gotta be patient. Look for that one person who's not afraid to just go for it.
next you want to zero in on their heartbeats. I like to start them off at about 120 beats per minute. That's equivalent to the heartbeat of a long distance runner. PM is the name of the game. It governs how your body moves. That's the magic number. Once you've gotten your crowd there, you're controlling their entire circulatory system. So because people pick each other at parties and social events, they really don't know each other. And when they get married, why do we have a 50% divorce rate approximately? Well, one of the reasons is people figure out who they thought the person was is not the person. Or the person lacks attributes that are actually important in life. They can pitch up on time. They're committed. They work hard. They can solve problems. They're committed to God. They love God. They'd rather stick with you and sort out problems and throw away the marriage. Look at these principles here regarding the wife in Proverbs, how different it is. She rises while it is still night. This woman can wake up early and gives food to her household and portions to her maids. She considers a field and buys it. She's in Tropinia. From her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies belts to the tradesmen, so she's in Tropinia, she's dynamic. Strength and dignity are clothing, and she smiles at the future. Strength and dignity are clothing. Many people are falling in love with people who have had 10, 15 boyfriends or girlfriends. Strength and dignity and honor is not their clothing because they don't care anything for commitment. We get married for all the wrong reasons. There's no awareness of what we are doing. There's, there literally is no cognitive understanding of what we are signing up for, what the responsibilities and roles will be. Therefore, we never take on the responsibilities or role. So we become incredibly resentful, either overtly or covertly angry and bitter. We feel trapped. We feel imprisoned by our choice. It's like we wake up one day wondering, how did I get here? How did I get this life? This isn't what I thought it was supposed to be. The romance is gone, and now I'm with this other person, and I have no idea what I'm doing, and this isn't what I want. The reality sets in, and then we're constantly wondering how to get out of it. And we feel stuck in a life and stuck in responsibilities that we don't want. That's a recipe for unhappiness. <laughs> When we get married for the wrong reasons and we rush in and create the illusion of what it is, we do that so we don't have to think through what we're doing and what it's going to be and, and what it's going to ask of us, what we'll have to give up, what we'll have to sacrifice. Which leads us to the second reason or second way that we make ourselves unhappy in marriage. The reason that we don't want to think things through and actually recognize what we're signing up for is we are pain avoiders. We don't want to look at anything that is going to expose us and make us have to look at ourselves and our shortcomings and our flaws. We don't want to, to face anything that will, we perceive as emotional pain or discomfort. So we certainly avoid the pain, which is why we have an unhappy marriage. A good definition of pain avoider is I don't want to be exposed as inadequate, meaning that there's something fundamentally wrong with me. We spend our whole lives creating a facade to ourselves and to others to cover that up and not have to go in and understand ourselves and see ourselves or certainly be exposed for where we are wrong, where we're not doing things correctly. We suppress everything. But one of the reasons being a pain avoider as makes us unhappy in marriage is we don't embrace the reality of marriage. 
the reality of marriage, I wonder if I can actually draw this out so I'm not just doing it in the air with my finger. <laughs> the reality of marriage is that, I'm going to do this first. The reality of marriage is that it does not look like this. Let's see. There we go. It's not a straight line. That's not the reality of marriage. The reality of marriage is that it looks like this. It's a series of ups and downs and challenges that push us in to life and into adversity. And what I teach for the purpose of evolving and growing and learning and doing the best that we can so that we can believe in ourselves. We can never believe in ourselves avoiding the realities and the challenges and the pain of life. We will always feel like a victim and that life is happening to us. Marriage is the exact same way. Ask anyone who's, who's brave and courage, courageous enough to see the reality of marriage and that it is a series of going through ups and downs and hardships and adversities of life that are just a part of life. And it's when we want, we want it to be this. Everything good, happily ever after, always, always doing great. But that's not the reality. Jobs change. Somebody gets fired. A parent dies. A child gets sick. Children just in, in general and, and them growing up and, and learning the ways of life and getting in trouble and getting off track and having to co-parent with somebody <laughs> as full of adversity. Again, we got married for all the wrong reasons, so we never stopped to think through what marriage was actually going to be and embrace that and want that. So what happens is we suppress our emotions. We, we put our blinders on so we don't have to face the adversities and challenges with our husband and be a team and dance through those challenges and adversities together. We just shove it all down, shove what's happening, hold our breath, cross our f fingers, hope everything turns out okay. And we never deal with the emotional experience of those adversities. We just suppress it. It becomes overwhelming and it creates a very, very negative lens. When we're stuffing our negative emotions because we're pain avoiders, it creates a very negative lens of our marriage and a very negative lens of life as well. And then it's like we're a pressure cooker that's ready to blow any moment because of how much we push things down. We're on edge, we're irritable, we're controlling, we're critical. We're, it's all a projection of how much we are suppressing and not dealing with in ourselves. So when we don't want to deal with the issues and the reality and the challenges of marriage, this leads to the third reason or the third way that we make ourselves unhappy in marriage. That third way is that we live on the fence in our marriages. When one, we didn't get married for the right reasons, so our, our fantasy is dashed and, and we feel disillusioned. And then two, we don't want to face any kind of pain, emotional pain, meaning we don't want to be exposed for anything that we might have to work on or change or expose how we're showing up or just deal with the challenges and, and ups and downs of marriage. We live on the fence. We don't want to go all in and, and dive into it all, always in a place of questioning our choice to be married, questioning whether we want to stay in it, questioning if it's for us. We believe the grass is greener somewhere else. We think there's some other life, there's some other man that we missed out on, not realizing that it's us that's creating our unhappiness. I think what is incredibly important is you pick someone who wants to improve things, who does not believe you find a great marriage, but you create a great marriage. Someone who can take problems, challenges, and make things better, who's positive, who likes challenges, who does not shy away from problems or conflict because they're pain avoider. It's like playing any kind of sport. You don't like getting tired. You don't like fatigue but you're going to be top person in that sport. It is shocking that people want to do well in marriage, but they, don't want, they want to avoid conflict. They won't, don't want any pain. That does not exist. 
if you want to be the best in anything, including marriage, you've got to be very good at the actual work of that craft. 